Katy Perry there with electric, and it's quite appropriate talking about all things electric, keeping the lights on and our electricity mix. Uh, there's a great article from John McDonnell, our Canberra correspondent on the Flow News 24 website, sharing some of the insights from the Energy Security Board uh, and an re- important report tabled at that board about how we make sure we do keep the lights on as we move heavier into renewables. And while battery storage remains a conceptual idea, uh, there are pushes uh, in Victoria Victoria and South Australia to provide battery storage, but the one in uh, Mirabal in Victoria near Geelong went up in flames recently. Uh, whether it was due to the testing that was happening at the time with that battery storage, uh, we've still got questions outstanding from the Energy Minister in Victoria about that. They haven't answered those questions about what was going on when that fire started. It went for several days. Uh, there were fines uh, issued in recent times in South Australia for a 2016 blackout that occurred. Uh, when wind farms were switched off uh, for the sake of protecting the turbines from being damaged during high winds. Uh, And the fines have been in the millions of dollars for a number of the wind farm operators for not helping to contribute to the energy needs when an important power line went down. Um, You've got the Victorian opposition announcing this week that they are rerouting uh, if they get into government the power line that's to come from Western Victoria into Melbourne, uh, potentially into Moorabool, uh, increasing the capacity of a line that goes along existing corridors so there's less disruption to prime agricultural land. Uh, of course, in Melbourne, that's not what the opposition focused on in promoting that policy. They focused on how they were embracing renewables. Uh, they didn't mention once in their press conference that they would be protecting prime agricultural land, and maybe that's because there were no Nationals MPs from the Liberal Coalition there represented at that announcement. But um, this Energy Security Board report is about guaranteeing the security of the energy supply and uh, the renewables industry, the wind and solar operators are cranky about this scenario claiming it's a subsidy or support for coal. Now they can spin that all they like but in the end the only battery or backup that we have in Australia is coal uh, and gas and that's what I'm going to go through and the figures in a moment uh, from the AEMO, the energy market operator dashboard that anyone can look at online if they wish to see what our energy mix is at the moment Uh, and it just shows that we are still heavily reliant on those fossil fuels to keep the lights on but there was a really interesting development earlier in this week or over the weekend uh, reports that in southeast Melbourne there's a world first trial of batteries being put on power poles or stoby poles you would call them in South Australia uh, to keep the solar power that's generated in neighbourhoods in that neighbourhood for distribution. This is a really, uh, I think, great development. Uh, it's just, in, just when one of those things, when you hear it, you think, why has no one thought of that before? Because what the solar panels do is they put a lot of charge into the grid, create huge infrastructure demand to move that power to where it needs to go, whereas if it could be stored locally and then sent back into the local homes, that would be a good thing. Now, um Naturally, the thing people might wonder is, well, why aren't those batteries just attached to the homes of the people who are generating the power? Uh, It's possibly the challenge is some people can't afford uh, the batteries. The subsidies are not sufficient to keep those batteries on people's homes and they're providing it, I guess, locally within the grid. But let's look at the power mix of what we're relying on at the moment while uh, batteries are being rolled out. And frankly, uh, there's just not enough lithium and other resources needed to provide the amount of power backup that would be needed if we had 100% renewable generated electricity. The dashboard data for um, Australia, uh, when I checked it early this morning, shows that um, the mix at 6.25am was that black coal was providing 51% of Australia's total energy in the East Coast. Of course, Western Australia is not part of the grid. Uh, 51% from black coal, 17% from brown coal. Uh, 8% from gas. Uh, So those fossil fuels contributing 76% of the energy mix. Hydro in Tasmania at 10% and wind was about 13%. So... um there was at that, that point in time uh, that was the generation mix but let's look at say the last um, 48 hours South Australia had a good period there where 70% of South Australia's energy was generated by wind but if you go back over three months South Australia's energy mix was 60% gas. Uh, Victoria's mix over three months 68% brown coal and in New South Wales th- over three months the primary source of energy was black coal. Now for those who are wanting to do something drastically about climate and believing we as um, humanity can do something about that, uh, that 
that's not going to be very good news for them. Uh, but frankly, it's the good news that it's keeping the lights on, generating electricity in that fashion. So we need some balance in the debate about energy, about whether batteries are going to be reliable enough to keep the lights on. Uh, and it just looks more and more likely that we are going to need to keep those fossil fuel capabilities uh, going for some time until we're certain that there's enough batteries that can provide the backup power and that they won't go up in flames when we're trying to rely upon them.